So, good day, everybody. What we're going to do today is we are going to multiply and we're going to divide complex numbers in polar form. So, in other words, we're going to convert our complex numbers to a polar form and um, go from there. So how do we do that? Let's take a look really quickly. It's something we've already done, so it's, uh, it will generally go pretty quick for how we convert them. So suppose we have a complex number, a plus bi, all right? And we'll call it z equals a plus bi. That's our complex number. Then we know that we can graph that in the complex plane using the point AB. So here's A, here's B. So AB is right there, and that's um, our complex number Z, A plus BI. Okay? Now, we want to get that point using a polar form. Well, if you think about it, Remember, polar form is basically what circle is this on from the origin. So what we can do is we want to find the length of this. Well, we already know the length of that. That is the modulus of A plus BI, or if you wish, the modulus of Z. That's the length of that. That would be the radius, all right? So R is equal just to the modulus of our complex number. And what is that modulus? Well, it's the square root of A squared plus B squared, right? So that would be the radius. And the angle we want would be this angle right here, this angle theta. And we can see that we can get that angle theta by looking at A and B the horizontal and vertical components of the uh, point. And um, if we use A and B, we then know that theta is equal to the inverse tangent of B over A, opposite over adjacent. And so these were the same conversion things that we needed to convert rectangular to polar, polar to rectangular. And so it's really the same pieces of information. So we'll, let's go from there and use that and go on. So let's practice writing um, a few complex numbers in their polar form, okay? So the first thing we want to do is we want to find R. And R is going to be the square root of 3 squared plus negative 2 squared, which is the modulus of our complex number. So let me put that here. The modulus of Z is equal to R. So that's the square root of 9 plus 4, or the square root of 13. So that's our modulus. And then we'd like to find the angle. All right, and so we know that theta is equal to the inverse tangent of um, B over A, which is negative 2 over 3. Now, this is not an exact form, so 3 minus 2i, we want to know where it graphs, so we would go 1, 2, 3, minus 2, so it's in the fourth quadrant. So the angle we want is a fourth quadrant reference angle to the axis. And so the inverse tangent of negative two-thirds, we could punch that out on a calculator, which is what I'm doing right now. Inverse tangent of negative two-thirds. And that would be equal to, let me check my mode, make sure I'm in radians. So I'm in radian mode, so that's good. And so this would be negative 0.588. 
eight like that. That's approximately what it is, okay? And so what is the polar form then? So the polar form is written A plus BI is equal to R times cosine theta plus I sine theta. Now, why is this the polar form? Well, if you multiply through, you'll see you have R cosine theta plus I times R sine theta. And if you'll remember, when converting to rectangular coordinates, R cosine was X and R sine was the Y, or in our case, that's the A plus BI. So that's why this is considered the polar form. And that's why we just use the modulus and theta. So in this case, we get A plus BI is equal to square root of 13 times uh, cosine of negative 0.588 plus I sine of negative 0.588. Okay? <coughs> Excuse me. So now let's do one where uh, we, are, uh, we get an exact angle. Okay? So uh, in this case, we'll let Z equal square root of 3 minus I. Okay? And so we want to write this in polar form. So the modulus of Z is equal to the square root, which is R, by the way, is equal to the square root of 3 squared plus a negative 1 squared, which is equal to the square root of 3 plus 1, which is the square root of 4 or 2. All right. And then theta is equal to the inverse tangent of negative 1 over the square root of 3. And now, just we check really quick on the quadrant. So we go out to the square root of 3, and then we go down 1. So it's also a quadrant 4 angle. And negative 1 over square root of 3 is... Um, what we get for uh, pi over 6. And so this angle is going to be negative pi over 6 in the fourth quadrant. Okay? So that's our angle right there. So now this one's exact. And then we can go ahead and we can write that in polar form. So square root of 3 minus i is equal to R, which is 2, times cosine of negative pi over 6, plus I sine of negative pi over 6. And now we have our polar form. Okay? That's the first type of problem you have to be able to do. Write the numbers in polar form. All right? Now, the next thing you have to do is you have to be able to take these numbers and write them back in rectangular form. So all you have to do in that case is simplify them. This first one would be done with a calculator. So you take the square root of 13, and then you take cosine of negative 0.588. All right? So on my calculator, cosine of negative 0.588 is equal to uh, 0.83 radians, okay, plus I, and then sine of negative 0.588 is equal to uh, uh, negative negative 0.555 radians, and then you multiply this, right? So you take um, second square root 13, and you multiply it essentially times the cosine of negative 
eight, eight, I, I should have just multiplied it out. And that gives you your first number, which was three, see? And then you take second square root of 13, and you multiply that by the sine of negative 0.588. And that gives you minus 2i. So that's how you get back. You just calculate it to get back to rectangular form. Same thing would happen here. You could, if you want to write it in rectangular form, the cosine of negative pi over 6 is... Um, uh, square root of 3 over 2. The sine of negative pi over 6 is negative um, 1 half. So negative i times 1 half, like that. And then you multiply that by 2, and then the 2's cancel, and you get square root of 3 minus so you get right back to where you started from. So if you have polar form of a complex number and you want rectangular form, all you got to do is multiply it out. You can use calculator to help you if it's weird, but if it's exact, you can use the tables and write it out. Okay? Any questions? Should be good, right? Okay, let's go to the next slide. Okay, so now what we want to do, we already know how to multiply and divide complex numbers in rectangular form. So now we want to multiply them in polar form. So here's one complex number, r1 cosine theta 1 plus i sine theta 1 times r2 cosine theta 2 plus i sine theta 2. So when I multiply them, I get the r1, r2, and then I get these cosines multiplied together. So I'm going to uh, use algebra. I'm going to FOIL these out, okay? First outside, inside, last. And so this will give me R1, R2. And then when I FOIL this out, I get cosine theta 1, cosine theta 2, plus I cosine theta 1, sine theta 2, plus i sine theta 1 cosine theta 2 plus i squared sine theta 1 sine theta 2. Okay? So look through that. Look first outside, inside, last. See if that's not what you get. Now, once you're here, these look suspiciously like sum or difference identities, and that's exactly what they are. But we need to simplify and kind of collect things. So this i squared is a negative 1, and we need to group these i terms right here together. Okay? So this is going to become r1, r2, all right? And then we'll have cosine theta 1, cosine theta 2, minus sine theta 1 sine theta 2 because the i squared is negative 1. And then we'll have, that'll be plus, we'll factor an i, and that'll give us cosine theta 1 sine theta 2 plus sine theta 1 cosine theta 2. All right. Now that we have that, we can recognize this. You have same function, but you have a negative sign. So which identity is that going to be? That's going to be the cosine of cosine of theta 1 plus theta 2. So this becomes R1, R2, the two moduli of the two numbers we were multiplying. And then this becomes the cosine 
of theta 1 plus theta 2 plus i, and then this one here, different functions, but same sign, so that's the sine of theta 1 plus theta 2. And so we have the same angle, but now it's a sum. And so to multiply complex numbers in polar form, you just multiply the moduli, the radii, and then you just add the angles. It actually is much easier to multiply in complex numbers. Now, what I have done here is a proof of what you get. So you don't need to do the proof, you just need to use this right here. So let's do a quick example of that. Suppose I say I want to multiply two complex numbers. And let me say, let's do, um, uh, let's do z equals 3 cosine 20 degrees plus i sine of 20 degrees, okay? And that's z1, and then z2, let's make that 5 times cosine 100 degrees plus I sine of 100 degrees, okay? And so if I want to multiply those, according to this, all I have to do is multiply the moduli. So Z1 times Z2 is equal to 3 times 5, 15, times cosine of 100 plus 20, or 120 degrees, plus I sine of 100 plus 20, 120 degrees. And there I have multiplied these complex numbers. Now, at this point, I could convert it to rectangular form. So follow the arrow, and that would be 15. And then cosine of 120 is cosine of 2 pi over 3. All right, so that'll be negative one-half plus I sine of 120 degrees or 2 pi over 3. That would be um, square root of 3 over 2. And, yeah, so then we get, uh, oh, got to remember my I. And so this would be negative 15 halves uh, plus i times 15 square root of 3 over 2. And so this would be the rectangular form of that. So it's much easier to multiply complex numbers in this form. All right, in polar form, it works out really, really nicely. Okay? Now, you don't always have to do this part where you turn it into a rectangular form, but you might need to. Just depends if they want you to do that. Okay? All right. So let's um, divide these. Okay? Let's do division. So it turns out if we do division, let's go back to this formula here where we multiply complex numbers. If we do division, okay, what's going to change here? So if we change this to a division like this, right, then it becomes R1 divided by R2, right? <coughs> And then we take um, cosine theta plus I sine theta and uh, work out uh, how we would divide those. And this, this would be a lot longer to prove. But it turns out if you divide, you'll divide the moduli and these, then you end up subtracting the angles. And that's it. That's the change. Okay. 
So we can go back and we can divide complex numbers. So uh, fairly simply. So let me grab a couple and let's do those. All right, a couple of examples. Let's do a division. Well, let's go to a new slide. Okay, so now we're going to do a division. So let's let complex number Z equal 2 cosine um, pi over 8 plus I sine pi over 8. And then we'll let W be the next complex number, and it'll be 2 cosine pi over 10 plus I sine pi over 10. All right? And what we want to find is we want to find Z divided by W. All right? Z divided by W. Okay? So how would we do that? Well, Z divided by W is R1 over R2, the modulus is, and then you get cosine theta 1 minus theta 2 plus I sine theta 1 minus theta 2. And that's the solution. So Z over W, R1 over R2, that would just be 2 over 2. All right. And then we get cosine of pi over 8 minus pi over 10. So you write that, pi over 8 minus pi over 10 plus I sine pi over 8 minus pi over 10. Okay? So 2 over 2 is 1. So we're done with that. And then pi over 8 minus pi over 10, you just have to do the fractions. So you get 10 pi minus 8 pi over 80. So that's 2 pi over 80 or pi over 40. So this becomes cosine of pi over 40 plus I sine of pi over 40. And there, you are done. You have done the division. Okay? You don't have to do any more. So as you see, this becomes sort of a plug and chug into formulas. So I want to do one more thing. What if I have a problem like this, and I say z equals 2 plus 2i, and w equals square root of 3 minus i, and what I want you to do is I want you to find Z times W and Z divided by W. So what we do, instead of doing it in rectangular form, which we can do, we just go ahead and we put them each in polar form. Okay? And so for Z, R is equal to the square root of 2 squared plus 2 squared, which is square root of 8, which is 2 squared of 2, right? For W, R is equal to the square root of the square root of 3 squared plus negative 1 squared, which is square root of 3 plus 1, or square root of 4, which is 2, okay? And then theta is equal to the inverse tangent of b over a, so 2 over 2, which is the inverse tangent of 1. z is a first quadrant angle, so this is pi over 4, all right? And then theta down here is the inverse tangent of negative 1 over the square root of 3, and we've already done this one earlier today. This is a fourth quadrant angle, so it's negative pi over 6. Okay? Now, once you have that, okay, you can now write Z and W in polar form. So Z is equal to 
um, 2 square root of 2 times cosine pi over 4 plus i sine pi over 4. And w is equal to 2 times cosine negative pi over 6 plus i sine of negative pi over 6. All right. So now, at this point, then we want to find ZW. So what's ZW? If you multiply them, that means you multiply the, the radii. So 2 times 2 square root of 2 is 4 square root of 2. And then you add the angles. So you, you're going to add pi over 4 and negative pi over 6. So pi over 4 plus a negative pi over 6 like this, so that'll be pi over 4 minus pi over 6, which will be um, 12 is the common denominator, okay? So this will be 3 pi minus 2 pi, or it'll be pi over 12. So you add the angles, you get cosine pi over 12 plus i sine pi over 12. And so... We have now multiplied it. We just did it in polar form, all right? And then we do the division, z over w, and that's going to be equal to um, 2 square root of 2 over 2, which is just square root of 2, and then we'll get cosine. Now, in this case, we do pi over 4 minus pi over 6. So pi over 4 minus a negative pi over 6 becomes pi over 4 plus pi over 6, which is um, 3 pi over 12 plus 2 pi over 12, or 5 pi over 12. So if you divide, then the angle becomes 5 pi over 12. And there we go. We have now multiplied and divided. So the reality is, if you convert them to polar form, the multiplication and division is pretty easy. The only real arithmetic you have to do is figure out what the angles are in each case. All right? That is multiplication and division of complex numbers. So you are now free to move about the cabin, right? Go and do likewise on homework problems. Alrighty, bye-bye.